Now, the senior minister, Yao Safu Mavo, has started processes to take legal action against the Auditor General in relation to some surcharges that were applied to him. In a letter uh, that uh, has been released to the media, he said that, I have today, 11 December, instructed my lawyers to commence legal proceedings to challenge the disallowance and surcharge imposed on me by the Auditor General following his notice of 24th October 2019. I have taken the action, according to their statement, because the evidence shows clearly that the Auditor General erred in law and professional procedures in the exercise of the powers regarding his audit on payments to Crawl and Associates Limited. The legal action has been initiated on behalf of myself and four other officials of the Ministry of Finance. And the letter concludes by saying that I'm optimistic that the courts will afford us the opportunity to prove the regularity of the said transaction and clear out na my names, uh, our names in the process. The statement was signed by Senior Minister Yao Safo Marfo. Right, uh, let's get on to the telephone lines and speak with Hans Kudia, a legal practitioner on this. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thanks very much. Uh, you're live on Midday Live. Uh, I want no, the minister, the senior minister is suing the Auditor General. Does it mean he's suing the man or the state? Well, thank you very much, sir. Uh, if you look at the law critically, uh, the man in person cannot be sued because he is a public figure. He represents a state institution. So he personally cannot be sued. And I'm a bit uh, surprised about if there's any such court suit against him or even the other service, because when you look at uh, Section 17 of the Civil Service Act, Act 5.8, Act 5.8.4, whenever you are served with any disallowance or a surcharge, you have the right to appeal against it to the High Court. You don't commence such action challenging it. So if he's talking about commencing legal proceedings in the nature of uh, appealing against the disallowance or the assessment, then in that regard, I would say fine. But then it can be a fresh matter uh, having been commenced against him or his, uh, his institution. That is not the position of the law. So, the so, so are you suggesting that, that the legal processes started by Yao Safu Mafo is out of place and uh, yes. procedurally is wrong? Yes, if it, if, if it commences fresh action against the audit service or against the Auditor General, then that would be a wrong approach. Mm. The law specifically, Section 7 of Act 584, states that whenever you are served with any disallowance or surcharge and you are aggrieved by it, you have the right to appeal to the High Court and not to commence fresh action challenging it or otherwise. So if his lawyers commence first action or initiated first action against the disallowance or the surcharge, then that would be a wrong starter. Right, interesting. So uh, let's look at it this way. Uh, now that it does appear that he's not suing the person but uh, the office, uh, who will be representing the Auditor General? Would that be the, the state? Yeah, honestly, almost all the civil, uh, the public services have lawyers. But, so in some cases, the lawyers can, uh, but this case is the attorney general who would have to represent the state. It's a state institution. And matters affecting the state is the attorney general that, you know, represents such institutions. So the attorney general will be involved. Although these institutions, as I said, may have legal officers who sometimes provide legal advice and legal services to the, to the service. But I think you're not likely to be the person but, that will defend. But would this, will this be fair? I mean, considering that the Attorney General, Minister of Justice, is an appointee of the same government uh, from which Yao Safu Mafo and the Finance Ministry officers uh, serve? Yes, you know, this is, this is the issue because we have talked about conflict of interest before, you know. So what I said, the other service, you know, is part of public institutions. And once it's a, it's a public institution that is involved, you know, you can't rule attorney general out. You can't rule that office out. They have to be involved. Right. You know, 
Yeah, so that's 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 how the whole thing right. Uh, Mr. Godia, we're grateful for your time. Yeah. Thank you extremely. Hans Godia is a private legal practitioner. This is midday live. Uh, let's uh, look at the anti uh, corruption dimensions and get onto the other telephone lines and speak with co chair of the Citizens Ghana movement, uh, Tony Dogbe, who joins us now. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks very much. So, uh, the position we are appears like the Auditor General is being dragged to court for doing his job. Is that how anti corruption graft agencies see this? Hello, sir. Right. Uh, uh, we're trying to get him on the telephone line. So uh, you will know that Yao Safo Mafo, the senior minister, has taken the Auditor General uh, to court. And we just spoken with a legal expert who says that the case cannot be against the person of the Auditor General, but the the institution he represents. Uh, this is in connection with a letter that was issued by the senior minister, Yao Safo Mafo, dated December 11, in which he says that he's instructing his lawyers to start legal proceedings to challenge that disallowance. So the word here is challenge the disallowance and surcharge imposed on him by the Auditor General. This uh, appears to be the right procedure to follow according to the legal aspect. He says in that in the letter issued to the, to, to the press that he is taking the action because the evidence shows clearly that the Auditor General erred in law and professional procedures in the exercise of his powers. Let's uh, get to speak to anti-corruption a uh, campaigner, co-chair of Citizens Movement Against uh, Corruption, Tony Dogbe, who joins us on the line. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thanks very much. I was asking earlier whether you get the sense that the, the court case uh, which is pending against the Auditor General's office is more like uh, uh, being dragged to court for doing his job. No, I, I think uh, uh, what the senior minister has done is the right way. Mm. Uh, I think uh, the Office of Auditor General can be sued just like any state institution. So if there is contention about something that the senior minister thinks no, I've explained and maybe it's not... We'll be grateful, sir, if you could speak up a bit uh, so that okay. we can... Right. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Okay. So I'm sorry for that. Okay. That's fine. So I, that I think the Auditor General, from my perspective, has done the right thing. Because basically, uh, the uh, senior minister has done the right thing in taking the matter to court. Basically, I think he thinks he has exhausted what he needs to exhaust directly with the uh, Auditor General. Right. But maybe the Auditor General does not see eye to eye with him. And the only space that can advocate on, on, on the two points of view is the court. Is so the I don't court. think this is anything to do with. Uh, 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 any personal action against the yeah. Auditor General yeah. or the office. I think that's the way to resolve disputes in this country. Mm. I, know, I know also that uh, Yao Osafu Mafo uh, uh, restrained himself greatly uh, from media commentary following the issuance of the surcharge, considering how much of this was in the media, especially press conferences organized by the Auditor General, Yao Domelevo, and all of that, putting this in the public domain without necessarily waiting for the senior minister to have his due uh, opportunity to follow the legal process by challenging the surcharge in court. Do you get a sense that the, how this was started, all of it, has been very unfair to the senior minister also? I'm not sure if the Auditor General maybe uh, was the one who first put it out into the uh, uh, into the media. You know, often the Auditor General's report will go to Parliament, okay, subcommittee, okay, and at that level, you have both uh, 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 political parties there who are often trying to take advantage of each other, mm. okay. So I would uh, it's difficult for me maybe sitting where I am to say it was the Auditor General who maybe first put it out there in the, in, in the public domain. But once the Auditor General, uh, I know the procedure is, if you see something, you get back to the person right. the explanation. Okay. Uh, 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 and if maybe after some time, no explanation is coming, then you have to finalize his report right. and send it to Parliament. So then that's not the end of it. Parliament has also the right to call the person involved to come before it to explain. Okay. So, but the auditor, uh, one person cannot move that report forever. 
Right. Uh, know, Mr. Dogbe, so we're grateful. That this song is complicated when maybe the Auditor General has the senior minister of that been able to respond to the query by the uh, 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 Auditor General. And he went ahead and completed his report and, and forwarded it to the authority that he needed to. But I don't think I, I don't think the Auditor General would deliberately uh, 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 want to impugn something against the senior uh, minister. But at the same time also, I think the way we see the Auditor General, he doesn't believe that anybody is above the law, just as he himself is not above the law. Right. So right. I think... Mr. Dogbe, we're grateful for your time. Tony Dogbe is co-chair of Citizens Movement.